a lot of people will go on TikTok and, wow, very crazy. Uh, we'll go on TikTok and talk about all these like ad hacks, part of the whole like get ROAS or die trying uh, thing. So like you'll see people um, take post-it notes and write like things on them or they'll take like a VHS and like write something on the label or they'll even do like a fake Google search um, and record it. And like we do that too. So please know that like you're in good company. The point of these ads isn't to just spike ROAS and like get away with getting like a really high return on one ad. It's way more about understanding what is the kernel underneath it. Example, if you do a fake Google search for your brand and it's like the best X for Y and that ad starts winning, it's not just that, hey, this feels different to the user. There's something about that ad that is a kernel of creative messaging for the brand that you're working for that needs to be expanded upon. If I have the best dog treat and that, and like the ad is like punching into Google, best dog treat for Maltese, best dog treat for Labrador, and like the product fake comes up, it's not that the ad format itself is the winner. There's something underneath that that needs to be expanded upon. And so it is maybe matching that like, you're the best X for this breed or this product for this market. Um, and then you have to kind of dissect that and figure out what holds true as you start to elaborate on it. So again, like the ad format while fun um, and interesting, isn't necessarily the takeaway um, because those things change, they, they lose efficacy over about like a month. There's been like a new ad format everybody goes crazy about on Twitter. Like that is a short term cycle. The long term cycle is figuring out what that creative message is and then wrapping it in your brand and then figuring out how to tell that story over and over again across multiple formats.